Okay, in this video, we're going to look at sample size and margin of error. In previous videos, we've looked at sample size in regard to the central limit theorem for quantitative variables. We said we had to have, if they were skew, if they were skew we needed to have a sample of 15 outliers, at least 40 extreme values, at least 100. That was for a quantitative variable. And for a categorical variable, we said the numbers of yeses and nos had to both be greater than or equal to 15. Well, now we turn to another issue with sample size, and that has to do with the margin of error. So when working these problems, I'll just make a few points right off the bat. The first thing we need to know is are we estimating the population mean or the population proportion? So the questions are going to say something like, what's the required sample size to estimate? For example, the population mean will be in there somewhere, or the population proportion. When we're setting the formulas up, what we'll do is we'll take whatever a desired margin of error is and set it to the right-hand side of the confidence interval formula. So we've already had some confidence interval formulas, so we'll just take that right-hand side and set it equal to the desired margin of error. Of course, the right-hand side is called the margin of error, which it is. Once we've done that, we'll solve for n. It's in, n is in all of the confidence interval formulas, and we'll need to have everything except for that, and then solve for n. Once we have a solution for n, we'll always round it up, because the n that we get is the minimum. So if, if n came out to be, for example, 26.2, well, the, that's the minimum, so it has to be a whole number, so we'll go round up to 27. So look here at uh, an example here. You can see it asks what sample size is required to develop a 95% confidence interval for the population mean on a statistics exam within three points. That's your margin of error. And the population standard deviation is about 15. Let me say, too, that we won't be able to use the T formulas in this because the T would change with every sample size. So we'll either have a population standard deviation or some estimate that we'll use uh, for the population standard deviation. So step one would be to pull the information out of the problem. We have a margin of error equal to 3, population standard deviation equal to 15, and we want a 90% confidence interval for the population mean. Well, if you have 90%, that goes with a Z value of 1.645, which you can either get from... Uh, Z table, I gave you a list of common Z values in one of the other videos, or you can go to the bottom row of the T table. The bottom row of the T table, just look for 90% and go up to the bottom row, you should see 1.645. So at the top there, we have, I clear this up a little bit from the clutter. That was the information we just had. Margin of error is 3, population standard deviation 15, and then this 90% confidence level means that we'll have a Z of 1.645. So what we said was set the margin of error equal to the right-hand side of the confidence interval formula. Remember that for a confidence interval that used uh, sigma, that it was X bar plus or minus z times sigma divided by the square root of n. So this is the right-hand side. It is the margin of error, and we'll set it equal to that. So we'll just plug now. 3 is for the margin of error is equal to 1.645 times standard deviation of 15 divided by the square root of n. From there, it's just a matter of doing some calculation. some of this out of the way here. And so we can take a few steps here. Let me take a few more steps than I have here. Normally this is how I would just go from the three equals and all that on down to the formula. But just in case you need a little bit more, a few more steps here, what you could do is say, I'm going to multiply both sides by the square root of n. Then I'm going to divide both sides by 3. Oops, sorry, I left out that 15 there. Divide both sides by 3. And 
and then square everything. Everything. So squaring the left hand side just leaves you with n, and then you can take the 1.645, 15 divided by 3, take all of that and square it. You can pause if you need to. I'm not going to leave it up there that long, but that's just getting from here to the formula I had there just a minute ago. And then you solve that, and you get 67.65, round it up to 68, and that's the minimum sample size to guarantee a, a margin of error of 3 with 90% confidence. Now, you st should still consider whether or not there might be extreme values in here. If there are extreme values, or you expect extreme values, then you'll still need a larger sample. So we have two considerations there. One, which we've discussed previously, has to do with uh, the central limit theorem and whether or not the sampling distribution is a bell curve. And then the ones we're doing right now consider sa sample size and margin of error and you know keeping that to three at a particular level of confidence. Okay, so here is a, another problem. What sample size is required to develop a 95% confidence interval? And this time it's for the population proportion. So we're going to estimate P. And in a pilot study, we had 20% make a purchase. So that's going to be P hat is 0.2. And the desired margin of error is 0.05. Pulling that out of there. P hat is 0.2. That's what we had from our pilot study. Margin of error is 0.05. That's down at the bottom there. And 95% confidence will go with a Z value of 1.96. Okay, again up here I just have the information presented as on the previous slide. Our margin of error is z times the square root of p hat q hat over n. Remember, if we just had the confidence interval, it would have been p hat plus or minus z times the square root of p hat q hat over n. So instead of p hat plus or minus, it's moe equal. And then we can just plug things in for the margin of error of 0.05, the z value of 1.96, and then p hat of 0.2, and then 1 minus that, or 0.8 for the q hat. And then again, it's just some calculations from there. Okay, so the next part is, what if we don't have that pilot uh, sample? So this is the same information, but now I'm saying we don't have that point two. And so if we don't have an idea regarding uh, the p hat, then just use point five. And let me explain to you why. It's because if we have p hat and q hat, and what I'm going to do is just write down a few values for each. If p hat is 0.1, q hat is 0.9, and so on. Those have to add to 1. should have just been 0.4. Well, remember when we calculate all these things that in the numerator of the standard error we have the product of p hat, q hat. So these are just different combinations we can have. 0.1 times 0.9 is 0.09, 0.2 times 0.8 is 0.16, and so on. Was a five there. And the largest value you can get there is 0.25, and that occurs when both p hat and q hat are 0.5. So by using a p hat and q hat of both of 0.5, we get the largest possible uh, sample size that we would need to for a certain for a given margin of error and confidence level. So you can just memorize that or understand why. But if you don't have an estimate of the sample proportion, then you're going to use 0.05.
in your calculations. So, okay. So again, I've set the right-hand side equal to the margin of error, and 0.05 and 1.96. But now, instead of the 0.2 and the 0.8, I have 0.5 and 0.5. and then my calculations. And you can see that, that this sample size is larger than the sample size in the other one. Well, always when you have the 0.5 and the 0.5, that will always yield the largest number down here for a particular margin of error and confidence level. That's it for sample size and margin of error.